Yo, how's it going everybody? It's DJ Sketch and welcome back to the channel. And today we're finally checking out The Messenger, an adventure platformer in a heavily inspired vein of Ninja Gaiden, Castlevania, and Metroid. Developed by Sabotage Studios and published by Devolver Digital, The Messenger is now available on the Xbox One after being released on the PS4 and Nintendo Switch back in 2018. This was a bit more than meets the eye initially, but throughout the game's 10 plus hour story, it was actually a rather interesting one to play through. The story starts out fairly simple. You play as a young ninja, bored of the usual routine, as they await the appearance of the fabled western hero. When his village is suddenly invaded by the demon king, and once the hero appears, it's a bit too late as your village is on fire. He then hands you a scroll to take across the island without much explanation as to what it contains, and from there you become the messenger, tasked with reaching the top of the mountain range and delivering the scroll. Sounds easy enough, right? Well, in the Messenger, you're essentially getting a blend of a lot of styles of action platformers mixed into one here. The gameplay and cutscene aesthetic of Ninja Gaiden, the traversal, cryptic riddles, along with the exploration of Metroid and Castlevania, even a touch of Mega Man X at times with the dialogue. It's a very straightforward game through the first half, which is going to feel familiar in its gameplay. The latter end of the game adds a bit of Quantum Leap into the mix, if you can wrap your head around that, considering a heavy mechanic of navigating time travel will be later introduced, becoming a large part of the game along with a fair amount of backtracking, but we'll get into more about that a little bit later. Gameplay wise, this is solid with good controls and a large amount of perks and tools to help along the way, like a grappling hook, wingsuit, and shurikens. But as the game progresses, what starts out as pretty straightforward is going to require getting creative in some spots. You'll pick up several abilities along the way, like cloud stepping, which essentially is the ninja's double jump after striking lanterns or enemies, which you'll use often. Combat is also solid, also being nearly identical to that of the NES era Ninja Gaiden with some added flavor for the new age. Though with the influence also falls the difficulty in parts, which is par for the course through a fair amount of this game. Aside from the combat, the platforming segments here are also pretty tight, but will also probably smoke you more than a few times. Later you'll meet Corbel, which will be your familiar also commenting on your desk throughout the game, and also offering some comedic relief. This character and the shopkeeper have some hilarious dialogues in the game along with the majority of the cast of characters. You'll see the shopkeep the most, so definitely check out his dialogue options when buying upgrades from him. Sound-wise, this game is also pretty awesome. The game's tunes start out with an early NES kind of chiptune sound with a very familiar Konami early Capcom feel, which also sounds pretty dope, and in the latter half will introduce a more 16-bit style that actually sounds more like a Sega Genesis and Mega Drive sound, and honestly those tunes slap something fierce when you get to that second half of the game because the music is bumping all the way through. As far as sound effects, it also sounds a lot like Ninja Gaiden as well. You can tell the team was very familiar with the Ninja Gaiden era from the NES, looking at how many details down to the sounds that they used were used as a bass, which again, is pretty tight. I really only had a few gripes with the messenger and they're all fairly minor, and also there's very few of them. Without spoiling anything major about the gameplay, it does have a bit of a drastic shift in the middle. And there's also there's some stuff that really can't be avoided that I know of that is mandatory to finishing the game. As mentioned earlier, this not only has the influence of Ninja Gaiden, but also Metroid and Castlevania. And that is what the second act of the game is mainly comprised of. This section, while having a lot of awesome moments, also had just as many where progression kind of halts since you have to explore the overworld to complete several mandatory objectives. The main one being getting all the music notes to access the last section of the game. The team that made this also seemingly drew inspiration from Simon's Quest and made a modern day Nintendo Power game. Considering there's a few parts that require a lot of sort of cryptic solutions similar to equipping a blue jewel and crouching behind a waterfall and waiting to ride a tornado across a river style moments. These parts and the time travel elements can get you a bit turned around at times, but you can buy hints from the shopkeeper and he'll somewhat direct you on where you want to go next, but for 300 time crystals a pop, even to repeat the same hint, so pay attention or prepare to pay extra. Or you can just open up an FAQ for these parts if you want to save a little bit of time on that first run. I'll limit the time bending aspect of the game, which is a large chunk of it, is a very cool addition and is a very cool layer to add as a mechanic. Graphics wise, this game is also pretty sick with its revolving 8 and 16 bit aesthetic. The environments down to the last detail are all pretty dope and the level designs are more complex than you would think at first, and getting new items opens up more the level to see. For the amount of exploration that's in the game, and they're all mostly sites that are interesting to take in and navigate. The time mechanic also doesn't just change the animations, but also change the cutscene graphics as well. And it comes off really stylish, and continues to elevate artistically as the game progresses, so that's also pretty tight. The Messenger took a little while to get over to Xbox as part of the Game Pass, but hey man, better late than never, because this is a very solid addition to the roster. This is definitely worth the playthrough, and will honestly surprise you with a twist along the way. 
Also, the writing dialogues is really fun and also reminds me a lot of old Sierra PC games from back in the day, which again is only a small bit of what influenced this title. The Messenger gets an 8.5 out of 10 and comes recommended to anyone that's into games like Ninja Gaiden or Metroidvania style games in general. Again, this would have been cool to get this one a little bit sooner on Xbox or at the same time as everybody else, but this was honestly worth the wait. And I thank you again if you made it this far into the video. If you found these reviews helpful and can use that as a resource, that's very awesome. I'm stoked this is helpful for you. And uh, check back often. We'll have more reviews and commentaries coming out in the future. And until next time, stay safe out there and take it easy.